everybody, welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. Today I'm going to be covering over the Lake of the Ozarks catfish in the winter. Um, we're going to be covering over the catfish patterns, habits, techniques, tips to help you catch more fish during the winter out of the lake. The lake holds three species of catfish. It holds flathead catfish, blue catfish, and channel catfish. Flathead and blue cat being the bigger of the two species, they can get upwards of 100 pounds at their maximum growing potential. And channel catfish can get up to around 35 to 40 pounds at their maximum growing potential. The lake has got a very, very high population of channel catfish, decent population of blue catfish. Not as strong of a population of flathead catfish, but they are in there and they can get fairly big. There is a slot length limit on the blue cats in the lake and the tributaries of the Lake of the Ozarks. The slot length limit on the blue cats is from 26 inches to 34 inches. And they did that a couple of years ago. Um, back in 2014, they put it into effect to help bring out more of the bigger size blue cats back to the lake area because so many of them were being harvested out before they reached that bigger size. So they're letting those fish, once they get to that range, get up there to where they're more of a trophy size fish. The Lake of the Ozarks has a reputation for having something called man-eating catfish in it, and I don't believe that there are any of those in there. Um, they're not going to like come up and take you down if you're swimming in the lake. They are uh, by nature scavengers for the most part, except for flathead. If they have something dead on the bottom, they will probably tear it up and eat pieces of it, but I don't think they're going to carry you off. Um, that's kind of something that's like an old tale around the lake area. We we'll always talk about how they see really big catfish, or there's rumors of really big catfish below Bagnell Dam. And from the electrofishing surveys and stuff that the Missouri Department of Conservation has done and everything, they've never really found anything of that kind of size in the lake. Flatheads are hard to catch in the winter, but not impossible. Um, live bait or fresh cut bait. And any season is your best bet as far as bait goes for flatheads. Downsizing your baits you can help you get more bites from the finicky fish during the winter time. Flatheads will almost go into like a mud hibernation state, um, laying just on the bottom and kind of burrowing themselves in the mud. They really don't deal with the cold too well. They're not impossible to catch, especially on like warmer days. They get a little bit more active um, as the temperature rises up, like if you have a cold front or something, and then you have a few days where it's in the 60s. And sometimes we have that in the wintertime here at the lake because we're in Missouri. Those flatheads will start to get a little bit more active and go looking for some food. Nearby, they're not going to be as aggressive in searching, but they will search still. And so you can catch them more on the uh, warmer days. Just the colder days and the cold fronts really take a big toll on these catfish during the wintertime. Uh, they don't respond very well to it at all, and they'll just lay in the mud. Metabolisms are slower in the winter for catfish because they are cold-blooded, and once temperatures start to fall, we see a shift into more of a lethargic state of being the blue catfish or more active species of the catfish in the lake during the winter, but they too are not as active or aggressive feeders as they are in the warmer months. Channel catfish can still be caught out of the lake in deeper wintering holes on smaller dead cut or live bait. Channel catfish are true scavengers. They're not as picky on what they eat like flathead catfish are. Flatheads really will only mess around with live bait or freshly cut bait. They don't go around and eat stuff that's been sitting on the bottom of the lake like a channel catfish will. Shad are abundant in the lake and in the winter there can be what we call shad kills where a large number of the shad are killed off due to cold water temperatures and cold weather. This provides an abundance of forage for channel cat and blue cats in the winter. Yeah, if this happens and we have a shad kill in the lake, Try to use more of their cut shad and shad guts for your bait as go-tos. That's what they're going to be already feeding on, so they're going to be more accustomed to it. That's what's going to be natural for those fish during the winter. Um, using a smaller bait, like so if you were usually using a piece of cut shad that was, you know, four or five inches long during the summer, and, you know, you're catching a lot of fish on that, you're not catching any, any fish on it during the winter time. Try downsizing that, maybe cutting it up into half that size and trying to using that because the smaller baits are going to be more appealing for some of those fish that already have a slowed down metabolism and are not quite as aggressive and wanting to feed as much on a bigger bait. I'd recommend fishing on or near the bottom for most scenarios during the winter time for catfish as they are not as active or likely to suspend in the water. They will suspend a little bit more on the warmer days and stuff but especially if you have like a colder day they're going to be fishing on or near the bottom that's where all the channel catfish kind of really hang tight down towards, flyheads hang down tight towards Blues will hang down tight towards. Really, the blue catfish are a little bit more active, and they will suspend up to go feed on suspended schools of shad at times. But that's usually on a better day weather-wise if we have like a southern wind and it's sunny out and you know conditions are correct for it. If you have 
uh, a storm coming through, it's colder outside, absolutely be fishing closer to the bottom. Ledges, channels, mouths of coves, current breaks, if there's water being run through the dam, are the general locations to locate wintering holes for catfish. So some examples of that would be like mouths of coves. If we go over here to one of the bigger coves on the lake at Lynn Creek Cove, it's got a really big mouth on it. It's got some channels and ledges that would be very prone to hold some good sized catfish and large numbers of them. You see you have a big channel right here from the old Osage River and then over here you have a point, another point, and an old creek bed from the Lynn Creek Cove itself and different depths that range out and through here. So deep wintering hole, good area for catfish to be sitting in. An area to look for whenever they're running water through the dam would be islands like this one here. The current will be coming up along these bluffs and all through the old river channel over here mostly in the white section and that current's going to be flowing right down the channel here. It's going to hit this island. It's going to create more of a current that shoots up into these areas. Through here, there'll be a little bit of a current that pulls in and some current that sweeps along the outside edge of this. And back here on this backside, where there's a deeper hole and also a point coming off of this island and at the mouth of this cove here would be an excellent location. It's got multiple factors in there um, and multiple drawing points for those fish to winter at. The first deep water on the upper end of an arm of the lake near a creek or river inlet is a consistent location for catfish to stack up and become a wintering hole for them. I look for shad in the area. I look for shad in the area on your graphs and you should see some marks below the depth. You find the shad on or near the bottom and um, that could be catfish. So if you're finding some clouds of some bait fish that are suspended down 10 feet up off the bottom, you might see some catfish just off the bottom there, like a couple feet or there might just be marks just laying right on the bottom and those are likely to be catfish in those situations. So I'm up here on the upper Niangua right now. I'm going to be looking for that first deep water, which it's actually not even graphed over here on Navionics, but there's an old channel as you can see. I'll zoom in a little bit more. That dotted line there is the old river channel and there's a bluff over here uh, right along that end and they will sometimes congregate in that area because it's about 15 to 20 feet deep along there. And that's the first substantial deep water that you really have up here on the Niangua. And not only that, but Ta Ha Tonka uh, Spring is over here in this cove and it pumps out 50 to 60 degree water year round and kind of heats up that water. So in the winter time, catfish are more lethargic and they have a slower metabolism and they want to try to stay warm. That's why they go to the bottom. This area has got some warmer water in it because there's a spring. And it's got deep water up here. As you guys can see right here, the first little part that we actually get graphed off of this bluff over here, coming back out through the strait, is actually a 19-foot hole that's sitting over here. And those are great locations for some of these fish to be sitting in. It's deeper than anywhere else. I'm looking for any kind of indention or ditch that's out in the middle of a main channel. On these upper ends, there's not as many big coves, and the coves are shallower in general, so those catfish aren't going to be hanging out in the mouths of them quite as much. They will be hanging out in the main channel itself, though, more often and it's a little bit easier for you guys to pattern and locate those fish in those sections because there are not as many places for those fish to be. So you can kind of locate them and pinpoint them because they have less hiding room, you can find them faster. Warm rains can pull fish up to feed in the water column in these areas as well as along the bluffs when there's runoff. So sometimes we'll be looking down here at uh, Tonka is always a nice warm spring. Sometimes we have some extra warm rain that comes in during the winter time we might have like a 60 degree day where we have rain in the winter because we're in Missouri and that warm runoff will come in here through the river and we'll start to push out in here to the lake and these fish that are on these bluffs over here and these deeper holes and out over here in these deeper holes will start to move up towards the river because there's warmer water coming in and it'll be more actively feeding during those times as well as if there's any kind of runoff coming in off these bluffs over here, you'll find like little creases or little spots where it's been eroded away. There's like a little cut in the bank and it'll look kind of like a V notch in the cliff. And those are going to be the spots where rain runoff will come in and that warm rain runoff will heat up the water right at the surface. Now pull those fish that are in the deeper water here up to feed right in that warmer area. So if there's like a cut on the bank over here, then they will be pulling up, like let's say that's a little notch right there and there's some fish sitting in this hole. There's warm water just in this little area. They're going to slide up off of this into here to feed for a short time while that water's heated up because the bait fish will move up there too. 
And those are going to be great times to go out and try to catch some of those fish. It's right after a warm rain or during a warm rain. Cold fronts can show off a bite in the midwinter just as warm rains and warm fronts can turn on a bite. Uh, the best time to target those fish is during those times of the warm runoff and a warm south wind is in place. The active catfish will be around shad, so locating them can help you pinpoint where the feeding fish are as opposed to just in the inactive ones. If you can find some fish and some marks around some shad in these deeper wintering holes, and some of these flats that are adjacent to these channels and these deeper wintering holes can hold some of those blue catfish to get a little more active during this time of year, like I said before. So they'll kind of slide up to try to feed on some of those fish. If the shadow kind of move up there along those flats, they'll kind of move with them. They'll go and be more in search of some food. They're not quite as active as they are during the summertime, but they are willing to go and chase a little bit of some food, a short distance anyway. So the channel catfish will probably slide up just onto the edges, <clears throat> more so of the hole, and they might suspend just barely off the bottom still. Blue cats are a little bit more adventurous and they'll move out. And catfish will stack up on the bottom of wintering holes during the cold days. So in the middle of these channels, it might be 20 feet deep and there might be like some rocks or something down there or something that's changed along the bottom that they're just holding to. And uh, it could be sand, it could be mud. It kind of changes from each and every wintering hole that you're in. But if you can look at your graphs and stuff, you'll see the difference in the bottom content. And you should be able to kind of tell right where they are if you can figure out where they are one day. You can come back the next day. They're in the same area because they really bundle up and kind of huddle up in a very, very small ball almost of uh, fish. And those just stack up down there. They'll lay in the mud um, a lot of times. Like the flatheads usually lay in the mud. Channel cats are really good about laying in the mud during this time. And blues will even do it if there's a really bad cold front or cold snap. On those colder days, don't be surprised to actually catch some fish with some mud on their belly or even like some rocks stuck to their skin because they'll be like laying right in the middle of it. You're also going to be able to kind of figure out um, the mood of the fish. If you're seeing that, you're going to know that they're very inactive and they're only going to be in those deeper holes. Keep covering water if the fish are not in your location. If you're not catching fish after about 30 minutes of fishing, your odds are they aren't going to be in there in that location for quite some time because they're not moving as much. So if you're not catching them in that wintering hole, uh, let's say they're not up here in this wintering hole here today and you fished that hole for 30 minutes, you don't see anything on your graph, you're not catching anything. Um, I'd be moving down here to a different hole and trying that for about 30 minutes and just seeing if you can catch something out of there because those fish are very uh, tight in their schools and if you're not on top of them, it's more than likely that you're not going to be on top of them anytime soon because they don't move. So you need to go and find them and put the bait pretty much right in their face. The shallow flats next to wintering holes are prime areas, especially on warm days. As I said before, um, that flat back there near Tonka is a good area. We'll come down here. There's another deeper hole. As you can see, there's more white. It's indicating a deeper section. I'm going to adjust this graph really quick here. As you guys can see, there's a bluff over here, an old channel, same old channel, and there's a deeper hole here where it hits 26 feet. There's nowhere else further upstream where it gets that deep. As you can see, it's all blue. First bit of blue, or first bit of white that you actually get to see along this area is right here against this bluff. That's a very good wintering area. Um, it's going to be more of a a deeper hole for them to sit in. It's just a straight up bluff over here as you can see because of the contour lines are being so tight it's a straight drop off and over here adjacent to that and just across the channel here there's a big shallow flat area that bait fish like to roam up on especially if you have a wind or something uh, kind of more of a flat area. It's good for different species during different times of year in the winter time on a warmer day the blue cats will roam up onto it and feed. The other fish, the channel catfish, will kind of sit on the edges of this channel and in this hole during the colder days. So kind of finding those areas are going to be very key areas that I'm going to look for. These are just a couple examples up on the Niangua. There's other places like this on the Osage and on the Gravelway and on uh, the Grand Glaze Arm. If you guys want to look around it a little bit more on Navionics, this is just Navionics Chart Viewer. Um, go online and look that up and you'll click on it. And if it takes you to their website, all you got to do is hit this Chart Viewer thing up here on, that I'm touching right now with my mouse. And you'll be able to zoom right in on Lake of the Ozarks, wherever you want to go. I'll give you another example of what I'm looking for. This is again on the Niangua, a little further up here. There's another flat over here. It's a little bit deeper, but there's also some deeper holes over here as well. So I'm going to adjust my map again one more time. So as you can see here, this white area is a very deep hole, 35 feet. It's also got a mouth of a deeper cove over here where it's in the 20s tapering out. Uh, there's kind of more of a couple coves over here. And 
got another cove over here, and this old channel runs right along. It does taper down fairly quick for a deeper hole in the middle of the channel. It is the deepest section of the Niangua up to this point, and it's adjacent from another flat, so this is an area to check out as well. Those fish on those warmer days have an area to go and hunt, and uh, also new food sources are going to be coming in and out of these coves all the time and out through this channel, moving up the river arm or back out through to the main lake. And so these areas right here are going to be high traffic areas for bait fish to go through. There's another section of the lake over here. This is the Osage Arm. And I'm really drawn to this area, this hard bend over here, because there's a big flat coming right in here um, where it's tapered off and there's like a little bit of a finger in here and a point. And this channel runs very deep over here in the 50s and 60s, Old River Channel, and then it just kind of jumps up very quickly, this old ledge right here. Excellent wintering hole for some of these fish to sit in this deeper water, or even out here where it gets deeper. And uh, they can slide up pretty fast and find themselves into some food, or kind of come up into here and kind of sit along these edges of this little indention, this ditch that's running right in here, and then move up onto that flat for those blue cats to feed on some of those shad that are up there on the flats. Current's always moving through and bait fish will always be moving through. Same situation over here with some of these points. Deeper water off the tips of them, mouth of cove. Uh, more of a substantial point for some fish to sit up on. There's areas like that. Anytime you see a bend, a big bend in the river arm like this, where it kind of comes in, there's a huge straight section, then it curves hard. There's usually a flat on the inside part of that and a deep channel on the outside. I can follow that pattern down over here too, as we have a big long stretch. And then over here, the channel's on the outside. There's a flat on the inside. Also another area to check out. I'm coming up here as well. There's another curve where it's straight coming up here. And then that channel bounces out to the outside here where I'm clicking now. And there's a flat on the inside corner. That's a pattern you can find kind of anywhere throughout the lake here. A lot of good wintering holes over here for these fish to be at. Different little points, um, areas that are out in the middle where you can catch some of these fish. Some of these different cuts that are inside the bank here where you can see there's like little lips and little indentions along the channel here be excellent locations to go if there's some runoff happening and heating that water up after a warmer rain which is kind of interesting those I would expect those catfish to kind of use this little bar right here in this ditch um, during the winter time as well as this channel here there's a couple of these points over here as well they might not be um, good every day but on the right day if you have a southern wind coming in here from the south uh, from the bottom of the screen going north here and pushing some of those bait fish up here uh, to feed themselves on the plankton that's getting pushed into the bank and on top of these points. I think those catfish on those active days, those blue cats will move up there as well to feed on those shad. So another good location to check out. But as you guys can see, there's all kinds of locations, all kinds of different holes on the lake. You don't have to go on the Osage, you don't have to go on the Niangua. Um, I just tip for you guys to locate some of these spots and it's going to be easier for you to find some of those deeper holes next to flats. There are going to be these bends like this one here, this one here, this one here. You can kind of see how the lake snakes around. Anywhere you see a big hard curve like this or this and you're kind of looking at that and you can see it even down here on the main section of the lake there's a couple of really large curves like over here and also on the Grand Glaze. Those are going to be the sections that I'm going to be targeting those catfish at this time of year and you're going to be able to pinpoint and locate those fish more regularly. Experiment with different holes and see what you guys can find in each one. Some catfish holes are better than others. Some will hold 10 to 20 catfish in them and you won't be able to catch half of them because they're not actively feeding at all. And then other holes you might move up and it'll be a few degrees warmer in that hole or slightly deeper or whatever the case may be. There's more shad in the area and those fish are a little bit more active because of that you're going to be able to catch five or six more fish out of the hole and there might be 30 or 40 catfish in there. And this time of year, uh, they really get balled up. Most of the water column doesn't have those fish in them anymore like they do in the summer where they're more spread out throughout the whole water column in different sections. They're going to be a lot more pinpointed and concentrated in their numbers. So getting your bait in those right areas and experimenting with where those are on the lake is going to be to your benefit. And the more spots you know, the more success you're going to have in the future. So Running around, I wouldn't fish an area for more than about 30 to 40 minutes without a bite or anything you're seeing on your graph if you're not seeing that. 
move your location and try another spot. If you have any questions for me about catfish on Lake of the Ozarks during the winter, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more lake breakdowns like this one. We're gonna be doing more catfish lake breakdowns over Lake of the Ozarks throughout the year. We're gonna do one for spring coming up next here in the next couple months. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Drop a thumbs up down below so other anglers like you and me can learn more about the lake area and how to catch more catfish during the winter time. Recommend this to some friends that you go out and fish with and let's grow the community together and become better anglers together. Thank you guys for watching this. Uh, have a great day, tight lines, and we'll catch you on the next one.